Hello all, my name is Elizabeth, my channel is Queenie Lame, and this is my video on my second semester of PA school. I am so excited. I just finished my second semester of PA school on Wednesday, and today is Saturday, and I just wanted to take the time to sit down, make this video. If no one watches it, that's fine with me, but I want people to reflect on what happened during my second semester of PA school, um, how I changed things for my first semester of PA school, what my plans are for my third semester of PA school, and my, therefore my final semester of didactic. If you guys don't know what that means, didactic is usually like the first three semesters of PA school. You are doing mostly book work, like you're doing your clinical classes, you're in a classroom, or in this case, I'm on Zoom, I'm not in the hospital yet. Then after my first three semesters of didactic, you are supposed to go into your three semesters, three to four semesters of clinicals. And then for my school, we usually finish off with a research semester. Um, so yeah, so right now I'm making this video about my second semester of PA school, how it went, I got through it, so that's the most important stuff. Okay, so if you haven't already had a chance to subscribe to my video, make sure to subscribe now and click that notification bell so that you can see updates as soon as they're uploaded. So first, I just want to start with the PA school that I attend. I didn't mention it in my first, uh, first semester of PA school, like those eight tips video. Um, so I go to the CUNY School of Medicine, Sophie Davis PA program, which is located in Harlem. And it is a program that seeks to educate people from underrepresented physician assistant backgrounds and get them into the profession. And then additionally, to practice primary care in the communities of the most need. So those were two things that really drove me to my PA school. I don't know where I'm going into, I'm just saying like that's some of the things that are great about my program and I really believe in their mission. And I know that they really believe in their mission through things like medical Spanish. That's like a class that you don't usually see on the list of PA school curriculums and I really like that they included that in their curriculum. So I was lucky enough to get in and here we are. I just finished my second semester. So now I'm going to talk about how many classes I took this semester. Last semester I took 10 classes. This semester I took 11. And those classes were Physiology 2, Pharmacology 2, both of which I finished the series for this semester. So we won't have Pharmacology or Physiology going into the next semester. I also took History of the Profession, Physical Diagnosis, Preventive Medicine, and then my Clinical Medicine 2 courses, which were Cardiology, Pulmonary, Gastroenterology, Infectious Disease, Nutrition, and Endocrinology. So in total, I took 11 courses. So next semester, I will be taking 13 classes. Now for cardio specifically, if you are in PA school or in any health related field and you want to know EKGs better, I would highly recommend the Illustrated Guide to ECG Interpretation by Jorge Muniz. It is a comic book. You can see my tabs. It, it made it seem so much more feasible that I would understand what was going on. And when I'm finally doing my cardio rotation, I am definitely going to use this to refer back to. I like that it has case studies in the back. I'm a very visual learner, so all these like cute little comic books, uh, comic illustrations were really helpful for me to recall in memory. So Sparkson's Illustrated Guide to ECGs would highly recommend that. I'll put a link for this in the description box below. So now I'm gonna talk about the things that did and did not change between my first and second semesters. So let's start with the things that didn't change. So I still scheduled my week out at least like one to two weeks ahead of time. I would plan how much hours I have free and what hours I could study what. Additionally, I still had the same general study hours. So I would study between 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. basically seven days a week. So if I didn't have class till 10 a.m., I would study from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. And then if class ended at 5 p.m., I would study from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. And then once 8 p.m. hit, I was off. That was, that was the end. On Saturday and Sunday when I didn't have classes and some Fridays, because the first couple Fridays we didn't have any classes, I would study from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. I'd have like a walk break in the inside of that. And I would, I would take like 
breaks in between for my study session. So that is basically what I was doing for my first semester. And then additionally, this semester was entirely on Zoom, as was last semester, so there's that element to it. And I also still use a general Pomodoro method, but talking about things that changed from the first to the second semester, my, pom my Pomodoro method has changed. At first, I was doing two to three hours and taking 15 to 30 minute breaks between each study session or block, but this semester I was inside more, so I think that my attention span was a little bit was like markedly shorter. So instead what I would do was I would schedule one hour sessions to study and then I'd take a 15 minute break. And unlike my first semester where I wasn't watching any TV, this semester I like felt more like I was like interested in TV again. So I would just take a 15 minute break and like watch something. Like recently I watched King Kong Skull Island, Godzilla One, Godzilla King of the Monsters over my break. I also occasionally watch anime. So that's what I was doing over my 15 minute breaks. Sometimes I would just lie down or sometimes I just go on my phone, but more regimented is what I did with the Pomodoro method. It was one hour and then 15 minutes off. So when I say that we were all on Zoom, that's basically 99% true. I did have one course that met up at Bellevue Hospital very, like only a couple times throughout the semester and it was broken down into smaller groups of students. So we were all socially distanced and we were kept down to a, to a small number, but we needed to like have some practice of like doing that physical diagnosis and like understanding that like you push down here, that shows appendicitis, or you feel pain when you do this, that shows that you like may or may not have cholecystitis. So we did get to meet up and do that, which I liked. I really liked it. It was actually the first time that we got to meet each other, a lot of my classmates. So it was kind of strange because, you know, this whole Zoom world that we live in now, like, meeting each other one-on-one -on -one isn't as normal, but it was also something that I like highly valued and really, really liked that they made sure that we um, got to do because physical diagnosis, you need to have that one-on-one -on -one contact. And funnily enough, like that is the thing that really drew me to the physician assistant profession was getting that one-on-one -on -one physical diagnosis, like patient interaction for my job. So I really liked that class. So last semester I said that I was going to come to class having already read for all of my classes so I was going to be so prepared, I was just going to like know everything so I could just ask all these questions during class. So I didn't do that, but I did do that. So I would say I did that for about 25% of my classes and in general I did those for classes that I thought were going to be particularly hard for me. So I did that for physical diagnosis because I knew at the end of that class we were going to have to do like 400 different little exams in order while timed and that was gonna have to be in under 30 minutes. So I definitely started practicing for that way ahead at the beginning of the semester. Um, other examples of that were like cardio, EKG scare everybody. So I got that comic book and I just started going through it one section at a time, trying to understand it, tabbing it, like drawing little things, trying to better understand it and doing practice questions. So I started with cardio ahead of time and then another one that I particularly remember was antibiotics. It's a huge, it's a huge class of drugs and it's arguably one of the more important classes of drugs. All drugs are important, but like this one was huge and very important and <laughs> Yeah, so I tried to attack that on early on. I, before they even gave the lecture, I came to class with like all of the antibiotics. Like I took the lectures ahead of time and I put them into a spreadsheet and I started practicing with sketchy farm videos and osmosis as much as I could before we even got to class so I could ask questions. So I wasn't able to do that for all classes. It wasn't really feasible, but I do think that I was able to do that for the classes which were most challenging or which I anticipated to be most challenging. So I did get to somewhat like do that resolution. And additionally, one of the things I did definitely do different this semester was I took one night off a week. So that was usually Thursdays because I didn't really have class or any exams early on Friday mornings. So class would end at like five o'clock on Thursdays, five, five thirty. So at five thirty I was off. By six o'clock, I, I, yeah, I was just completely off. I was off from six o'clock to whenever I wanted to go to bed on Thursday. And uh, sometimes I would invite my boyfriend over and I would 
occasionally I would practice physical diagnosis on him because I needed someone to practice because I really didn't want to have the first time I was practicing be the week before I did physical diagnosis. So I practiced on him doing that, but most of the time it was just like completely off. I'm just gonna make dinner. We're just gonna watch a movie and I'm just gonna pretend I'm not in PA school for a night. So yeah, that I think was really good for my mental health and I 100% intend to keep on doing that for my summer semester or third semester of PA school. So now I'm just gonna talk about how I got through this semester. I think one of the things that really helped was my classmates. Um, after we like maybe went over some material and we like had an idea of like everything was going to be on our tests We would make study guides that we would share through a Google Drive We have a group chat that we all talk on um, Occasionally we'll break off and like talk to individual people about like certain classes like people who like seem to understand it based on what we saw in class or people will just like offer some help sometimes one of my classmates would send like a meditation thing before every test and I thought that was super helpful. There were ways to actually lean on my classmates which I very much appreciated. As I said, uh, my boyfriend comes over and occasionally I practice physical diagnosis on him and I thought that was instrumental in the fact that I was able to get through my physical diagnosis, like all those exams that I mentioned um, in 27 minutes. I only missed like two things but there are so many that that doesn't, ma like, doesn't matter. But anyways, so I think that was instrumental in me getting through the semester and feeling like mentally prepared for what I was gonna have to do. It was just like practicing a little bit every week, something that I was pretty nervous about. Also, I actually ended up getting some additional resources for my study tools. So you already know that I used Osmosis. In my last video, I listed all of the books that I use as practice questions. I'll include those in the description box below. But I also got a membership to Picmonic that really helped for my clinical classes. It really did, especially for infectious disease, which can be a little bit harder to like remember because there's so many like different types of antibiotics, like I mentioned. I also, on our drive, we had some sketchy farm videos from someone who had bought them like way back when. Those were super useful when it comes to antibiotics and they were also super useful for other drugs. So I started using sketchy farm for the drugs because osmosis didn't really have um, a very detailed antibiotics video that I could at least find. And I was using osmosis for my pharmacology videos for the first semester and that's why I think I was able to remember so much for pharmacology, which is traditionally a very hard class. And then also, we made some group quizlets, so for classes like preventative medicine or physical diagnosis that don't really have a question book, which was how I was studying for basically all my other classes, including like anatomy and pharmacology, we made quizlets and we shared them with our classes so that we could all do practice questions, because the recall is how you really solidify things in your brain. And then finally, one of the ways that I think what really like helped me get through the semester was just trying to like realize how lucky I am and just stay so grateful like I still can't believe that I'm here right now that I got into PA school that I'm at the PA school that was my number one choice um, that I'm getting to do what I'm getting to do all the opportunities that are like out there for me there's just so much to medicine that I don't know and I never will know but will always try to learn more on a daily basis so I think one of the things that really helped me get this semester especially with like all the things that have happened you know, like last semester, which I didn't really talk about too much, but some of them were like pretty hard to deal with. Um, I think that was just like realizing how lucky I am to be where I am, to live where I am, to have what I have, and to have all these opportunities afforded to me. So that is something that when I'm having a hard day, I just have to remember how lucky I am. So that's important. So now I'm going to talk about some goals going into my third and final semester of didactic year. So number one, I want to work on doing things, like adding things to my schedule that will improve my mental, wow, that will improve my mental and my physical health. So I have like, there are four pillars for that. So one is running on a regular basis. I totally basically stopped running for four months. So yeah, I think that if I can get back into the, the habit of running when I was doing like five or six days a week, that that will help me deal with other types of stress. Then I want to incorporate a meditation practice into my day, every day, at least 10 minutes. I'm using the FitMind app for that. Then I also want to start weightlifting because like, you know, I want to keep that bone health. So I've been using Dairy Hananova's, um, 
weightlifting practice. I was doing it off and on. Like some days I just like totally forgot, but I really want to make a, I really want to dedicate myself to this like me trying to improve my physical health. So I want to do that at least three days a week. I want to do weightlifting. And then additionally, I want to do yoga. I had been doing yoga. I made like a video, like a fun little birthday video um, with one of my lock friends. Um, I had been doing yoga and it makes me feel amazing. So I want to get back to that. So I'm going to keep doing that. I'm going to start doing that again. Then I also want to start painting. I used to paint a lot in high school and college, but I haven't done it in years. But I think it would be nice as a way to just do something different, get outside. I got some watercolors. I'm not much of a watercolorist. I'm more of an oil paint or acrylics kind of person, but I'm just excited to get outside and just like try my hand at some artistic stuff again. And then finally, one thing that I think will definitely and did last year um, improve my mental health was studying outside. For me, it's just so much different. I, I need like the change of scenery. I like the air, I like the sound of the birds. I like having people around, like a little bit of like background chatter. As it is, I usually play this one Central Park like YouTube video that like kind of sounds like Central Park because I was stuck inside all winter. So that's also what I'll be doing. And finally, I'm going to try to make more regular YouTube videos about whatever. So make sure you subscribe and click that notification bell so that you can see videos as soon as they're uploaded because I intend on making more than one video over the summer. So I would really like to get back into that because it's just something that I really enjoy doing. I really enjoy like communicating with you guys, um, whether it's about locks or about physician assistant school. I think everyone's been super supportive and it's just been a really amazing experience in general. If you haven't had a chance, make sure to subscribe, click that notification bell. If you like this video, make sure to like below. My name is Elizabeth, but my channel is Queenie Leem. Thank you so much for watching.